one of the best spots to cool down after the carnival celebration is Fort Milford. It's breezy and provides a beautiful view of the Store Bay and Pigeon Point beaches. This was indeed an eventful week and as usual, we have a packed show for you. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Code of Conduct for People in the Assembly. Details on the latest town meeting in Plymouth Bethesda. And later, we take you to the Tobago Calypso Monarch. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old. And I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Store Bay Beach facility and tourism is all I will take. Fort Milford is located in Crown Point and is one of Tobago's oldest colonial forts. For those of you in the area, feel free to visit as it's a cool five-minute walk from the a &R Robinson International Airport and Store Bay Beach facility. In our first story this week, Omodara Mills tells us about the code of conduct to be established to ensure representatives maintain a respectable standard of behavior both inside and outside of the assembly chambers. Here are the details in this report. Hi, Kelvin Charles. Those elected to represent the people are seeking to ensure that they are held to high ethical standards in public life. So in the first plenary sitting of the 2017 to 2021 Tobago House of Assembly, a motion was passed for the establishment of a code of conduct policy. A code of conduct basically specifies certain rules for behavior or standards to which one's behavior must comply. It's a document that will guide the behavior of assembly people outside of the monthly plenary sessions. We have to recognize that governance isn't just limited to the walls of the assembly chambers. It's um, wherever we walk, wherever we speak as members of the assembly. So we have to be very careful that our actions are not actions that would bring the House into odium or disrepute because we have to recognize that we have great responsibility on our shoulders now. Trinidad and Tobago is a member of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, the CPA. That's an international organization with over 1,000 members. Tobago will use the CPA's recommended benchmark for codes of conduct that's applied to members of parliament as a guide in the creation of its own code of conduct policy. We are looking at the fact that there's a benchmark internationally. Grenada has also done it. There is a code of ethics for parliamentarians in our national government um, for all parliamentarians. So again, it's nothing that we are, we're not reinventing the wheel. What we are doing is saying that we want this wheel with these dimensions for Tobago. A five-member committee has been set up to discuss what will go into the code of conduct document. There will be three members from the majority and two members from the minority of the assembly. As chairman of the committee, Councillor Devines is hoping that everyone will actively contribute in the establishment of the policy. We want to have as much participation and collaboration in this process as, as much as possible. And we're going to be taking a lot of the advice of the minority in this. And that's why it was set out that the minority should be a part of, of of this, these discussions because it's important. It's not a document for some, it's a document for all. And we have to recognize this. Um, we want the public to be involved as, as well. We would like the public to be involved because again, the public is, the, um, is going to have to hold us accountable to these standards. A report on the document is expected to be presented at plenary no later than May of this year. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Fort Milford is a settlement of the Dutch under the protection of the Duke of Courland. From the year 1770, the British Army maintained a picket post right here and the militia manned a two-cannon battery on the site until the island fell to the French in 1781. 
Now, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service hosted their second town meeting with the residents of Plymouth to better know what they can do to make the community safe. Here are some of the issues that were highlighted in this report. Crime is a complex issue that cannot be solved solely by the police. That's why the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is strengthening its partnership with communities across Tobago by hosting town meetings where residents can interface with officers directly. The latest town meeting was held in the district of Plymouth, Bethesda. Noise pollution was a major issue for residents in the area. I have a problem with loud music certain times of the day, sorry, night, maybe about th two or three times a year, birthday parties. And I have a neighbor that is very, very close to me, just in my bedroom window. I spoke to that person once. I didn't have to get any, well, any proper response. I bear the pain of sleepless nights. We are quite aware of the situation, and we have begun to address the situation. We are started in the Crown Point District where we partner with the EMA, where we are going about testing the noise level. We are looking at the Summary Offenses Act where persons can be charged with only noise being meter of being a nuisance, a public nuisance. The residents of the area also called on the police to carry out more foot patrols. We have been talking to the officers over time and, and if you go back to our record from each town meeting, we are asking the officers when you are driving through the community, stop, park up the vehicle, walk through the community. So it's not just driving through, turn down the glass. As a young constable, we didn't have air condition in cars. They're taking out the air condition from the cars. Somebody suggests we should do that again. Another burning issue was the eradication of all drug blocks. I'm assuming that there's no active drug block in Plymouth presently. I, I could be wrong. There might not be an active drug block presently. The reason being... Them fellas know men killing men for the money and that kind of thing, right? That's my suggestion. Why not keep the drug blocks suppressed? So that would eliminate some of the crimes and that kind of thing. I can assure you that um, we are being proactive now. Uh, and I don't want to say there are drug blocks here because I, I don't think we should have anything called drug blocks. Because if we are all proactive, I'm saying that all those areas where people assemble to do illegal activity, we should ensure that we remain there. In fact, we are now having some static patrol. So the patrols are going to go and park up right there. This was the second town meeting hosted by the TTPS for 2017 as they attempt to bridge the gap between the public and the police. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. This fort was erected by the British in 1811 and remained British territory until the army departed Tobago in 1854. The remains of the fort included a series of walls built from cut coral limestone and six cannons. Calypso competitions give participants the opportunity to highlight what affects them and by extension the country. Ten contestants participated in this year's Calypso Monarch, but one person would be crowned the Calypso Monarch of 2017. We'll tell you who in this report. Ten of Tobago's best Calypsonians battled it out to be named Tobago Calypso Monarch 2017 at Shaw Park Complex. They walk the streets before elections, when elections done, they're the scarcity none, they're not well in their head, they're not well. But it was Alex Gift, better known as Tobago Chalky, with his rendition, They Not Well, who walked away with the title, dethroning last year's winner, Nicole Thomas. Nicole Thomas, with a piece entitled One Week, managed to capture the third spot along with Wendy Garrick. And when strange, strange friendship begin to fall, when men from John John to climb on George, to conversate on a natural high, the event this year was deemed as successful as the Calypsonians have significantly improved from their lyrics to performance style. I must express that we have seen a very high standard and it's, it's clear that where Calypso is concerned, Tobago is definitely 
doing quite well at this time. We continue to recognize all the Tobago Calypsonians for their achievements, for their contributions throughout the world. Here are some of the other performances. More pan in the carnival. He plan to send more criminals down Yeah Where we already living in fair Come let me rise above Fly train bag or fly So with class and learn from your past Tobago Calypso Monarch 2017 Alex Gift took home one hundred thousand dollars. I'm David Jacobs for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, we tell you what you need to know about absent fathers. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Come, there we go, there we go, to Tobago. That paradise, Bamba, Robinson Crusoe. And it is there, it's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. Welcome back. We're exploring Fort Milford. Now five of the six cannons belonged to the British, which is evidenced by the GR emblem marked on it. The other cannon was made in France and is marked with a Tudor double rose. The Scarborough Library facility hosted a lecture that addressed the issue of absent fathers in the community. Researcher Dr. Sharon Brown highlighted how this situation affects children and by extension, the society. Listen up to this report. Fathers have a critical role, both in the family and society. When there are no strong fathers or father figures, families are much more likely to experience a range of social problems. The issue was tackled recently at the Scarborough Library facility, which hosted a lecture by researcher Dr. Sharon Brown. Dr. Brown completed her doctorate last year with a dissertation about the impact of absentee fathers on homes in Tobago. She shed light on some of the challenges the island is facing. Today on the island of Tobago, we're seeing more homes that are fatherless than ever before. This problem that we have with the sons that do not have fathers in the home, we see a lot of sons are not going for higher education. And even in the college where I am right now, we're seeing one, we're seeing one male for at least 10 to 15 females. And even where we're seeing young men who are not in school, we're seeing an increase in illiteracy, drugs, and also alcohol. The impact of absent fathers in Tobago is magnified due to the size of the island. Its population is close to 65,000. Dr. Brown says she hopes her research will be useful to those who work with youth, particularly young men, such as teachers and social workers. She believes it can help them to understand their needs and unique perspectives on social issues. She says there are several reasons for the absence of fathers. 80% of the male respondents identified fathers who neglected their family obligations, turning to alcoholism, violence and arrogance. The remaining 20% felt that fathers who neglect their family's duties was due to drugs, substance abuse, and frustration for lack of money. Dr. Brown's study also looked at the responsibility of fathers who leave home. She says all absent fathers she interviewed agreed that they should still support their children. Fathers said that they needed to guide their sons, provide for them financially, be responsible to their son in every area, and also a father needs to be there to assist his son and be there to make sure that he's responsible. Dr. Brown has over 15 years' experience as a mental health therapist. She's worked with children and families in more than 50 schools. I'm Kuhn DeFritas for Let's Talk Tobago. For most of the 18th century, Tobago was considered a neutral island as the French and British battled each other for ownership. In 1763, the Treaty of Paris ceded the island to Britain, making it the beginning of organized colonization. So art is about expressing yourself, creating visual or performing artifacts. In this next report, we tell you about a few talented young men who used art to beautify their community. Have a look at this. 
Since the Codlaw Hall Youth Foundation was established in 2012, it's been working to help develop the community and to bring residents closer together. That's the inspiration behind their latest project. Now, the entrance of Codlaw Hall has been adorned with this beautiful mural. The initiative of this mural project is to beautify the community and also to paint educational words and messages to the youth in the community. Pieces were carefully chosen to the foundations of their community, as well as their hopes for the future. Through deliberation in the um, community, and we considered some of the national emblems to edify and build patriotism back into the community because it, it has been lost. The foundation's president says the group is also grateful for the continued support of the Tobago House of Assembly. Collaborated effort with the THA, the Department of Community Development and Culture. We, they funded us with some of the material and funding for some of the painters. One artist says he was delighted to work on the project. Doing this venture was, for me, fun. And no matter how long we stayed out at night, it didn't feel like a task because art is something I enjoy doing. The foundation is set to embark on other beautification projects in the community during the year. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. A few of Tobago's colonial forts include Fort James located at Plymouth, Fort Bennett at Black Rock, Fort Granby at Studley Park and Fort Milford right here in Crown Point. Now come with me as I take you on a journey of steel pan. This is part of our segment called Footnotes where we look at development through the years, the highs and the lows, the milestones and memorable moments since 1980 when the new Tobago House of Assembly was formed. Let's have a look at this week's THA Footnotes. You know it as this. But what's now known as the steel pan started from tambu bamboo and metal pan bands which used kitchen utensils and metallic containers to create music. Through innovative techniques, the sound of the steel pan improved over the years to what we know now. Oh, the sweet sounds of a national instrument invented in the 1930s. But before the days of large, medium and small bands, panorama competitions, female band players and traveling the world to expose the culture, bands such as Cats and Jammers played in a very small space in Black Rock back in 1950 with just 12 young men. Today, they have transformed from 12 to near 100 players, having a place to call their home and owning nearly $1 million in instruments. This, as the Tobago House of Assembly re-established in 1980, and began to aid bands around the island. Just last year, the Tobago House of Assembly refurbished Carib Dixieland Steel Orchestra's Pan Theatre. We are now in a position to offer Pan classes in a more comfortable and spacious environment in May 2017. Those of you who are familiar with what we do here, where Pan classes are concerned, we normally walk the village in April and by May, we have the kids in here, and by October, they graduate. Cats and Jammers as well got their pan facility commissioned. This means so much more can be done to further develop the musical skills of Tobagonians. From a dividend perspective, the dividend intends to, to infuse a much more consistent uh, approach to the, the, the maintenance program, as well as its, its procurement practices and that sort of thing, to ensure that we have value for money one, and ensure that, that, that contractors in the Tobago space uh, all, all have a, a, a fair uh, attempt at, 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 at bids and that sort of thing. And steel orchestra groups around the island also have a forum where they can compete for bragging rights and big bucks. Through the Tobago House of Assembly's Pan Champs initiated in 1998. In 2016, Tobago saw eight finalists qualify for the competition, the most in a long time. The bands have also been showcasing their skills nationally with assistance from THA, Cats and Jammers, NLCB Buccaneers, NGC Steel Explosion, Tobago Panthers and RBC Redemption Songsetters to name a few, 
have made it to the National Panorama Finals. In 2016, an unprecedented 14 bands from the island made it to various Panorama Finals, but Tobago was able to capture the title in 2012 and 2013. Extremely pleased and very happy about our um, selection into the finals. The band worked extremely hard and the players are all elated because, you know, we, we've worked this year with a new arranger and so, you know, they had to get acquainted with him. It's clear that rewards are being reaped from the Assembly's commitment to placing more emphasis on the national instrument in communities. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but when we return, the Yahweh Foundation shares their latest project. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us. They say it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters the most. And in the face of disaster, chaos, and panic, it is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency's comprehensive emergency response plans that will matter most to Tobago. This agency's modernized approach to emergency management is driven by technology, powered by networking, focused on community resilience, open to partnering, enhanced through training, and led by a highly competent and dedicated staff. This has positioned them as one of the premier disaster management agencies in the region and earned them Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard Certification. Congrats, TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Historians say that Tobago changed hands an estimated 30 times more than any other Caribbean island. Dustbin Charlie was a character created long ago to help children preserve the environment. Things have changed as we are in modern times. That's why the Yahweh Foundation created a new project to engage people in preserving their environment. Here are the details. We all need to contribute when it comes to protecting our environment. And the Yahweh Foundation is doing its part by providing the environment in Tobago with a little CPR. That's Connect, Preserve and Restore. The project started in February last year. The foundation is raising awareness about the importance of keeping our environment clean. And one major component of CPR is the recycling of plastics. We have partnered with various people to be collecting solid waste in the community of Buku once weekly and taking that solid waste, mainly plastics to begin with, and then we will expand to paper and bottles and so on. But for right now, it would be plastics uh, being collected and taken to Trinidad for it to be shipped, to be crushed into pellets and shipped away to be recycled. The Buku-based organization is also educating school children on the importance of the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. The campaign is focusing on the importance of recycling materials such as plastics, glass, cardboard, and aluminum. What we've found is that there's been a, a very, very huge increase in their awareness. And um, that's the first step. And what they've also begun to do now is to integrate that into their lives and take it home to their families so that uh, their families are going to be the first ones. The families of the children who we work with directly are going to be the first ones to help us with this project to get their neighbors involved in the collection of solid waste. Young Tobagoonians are showing that they understand how they can help support the environment. If I see anything, like any plastic bottles on the road, pick it up and throw it in the bin. I learned today if you recycle, your environment will be clean. The project is also training a group of young adults to be stewards of the environment. Ms. Camps says it goes beyond recycling trash. They're going to be exposed to all aspects of environmental care and preservation and restoration. From our core, what we are centering on, which is a collection of solid waste and recycling, but we are, they're also going to be exposed to management of our coastlines and wetlands. Over the years, the Assembly has provided support for the Yahweh Foundation's projects. 
for CPR, waste collection and recycling should begin in the next few weeks. After implementing the project in Buku, the organizers plan to use the model in other communities throughout the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Here at Fort Milford, there are lots of remains to be seen, whereas at Fort Granby, there is little remains left to be seen. The gravestone of the lone British soldier who died in 1772 is one important visible aspect that remained at Fort Granby. Roxburgh was the place to be as people from all ends of Tobago came out to support their favorite Queen and Calypsonian at the Windward Afro Queen and Calypso Monarch 2017. The winners are... Miss Afro 2017, representing Speyside, Caris Caris Murray of Speyside is Miss Afro Queen 2017. Caris, who was contestant number one, stayed on top throughout the entire competition which consisted of casual carnival wear and evening gown. She stunned in this piece for her casual wear and then elegantly graced the stage in this stylish evening gown. In addition to winning the competition and $8,000, Caris also took home the title of best casual wear. The geometric shapes at the front highlight the connectivity between God and his people, while the gold panel frames at the middle of the jumper are reminiscent of the golden age of Tobago's heritage. Taking on the second position was Olivia Chadban of Delaford, while Kezia Williams of Roxborough placed third. Meanwhile, Kimon Adams of Hope won Best Evening Gown. And Nicole Thomas has retained the title of Windward Calypso Monarch with a piece entitled One Week. She won $40,000. Placing second was Kenneth Punchin Thomas with We All Will Die. And take me word, what I keep in you. Them day coming back because they were dead. Steve Jack and Barry and them, they were dead. And Marvin Lewis's piece, Two Pearl, captured the third spot. And move 201. But it's so early, why it can't be here? Oh, they hold, neither could drink my rum. But if I take two balls, the boy gone, 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 gone. I'm Keishon Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, how would you show off the culture of Tobago? While you think about it, let's take a look at who had their say this week. The traditional aspects of Tobago heritage, which is like the goat race, the dumpling and crab, the pemi, the foods. Nowadays, when they're having accidents and different things, people putting it on social media. So in order now for you to display um, your culture, you could also display it on social media by showing different dances and um, crafts and stuff. I don't know if if it can be transferred to where I come from or if you guys can get the same way our culture to this side and this side, this culture to that side. To be more welcoming, more informative. Get the right people in a position that who know about the culture, so when they go to sell Tobago, they will talk about Tobago and the culture that Tobago could offer to the world. I believe the part of the culture is in Tobago is to be friendly with people, and that's what I like about Tobago. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago, and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program, and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
from our house to yours. I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week. We close now with a montage of the Senior Parade of the Bands and Kiddies Carnival 2017. Enjoy.